good, uh, good evening, dear ladies. Let's bless Bezat Hashem that we will all have a school to greet Mashiach Tzikhan Bachamim Moin Tabak Bim Rabbi Amen Ramel and Eliyahu Nabi Eliyahu Tishvi Eliyahu Biladi Bim Rabbi Moshe Tavid Eliyahu Mizakul Ato. We all have the school to see the building of Beit Hamikdash Shishi Bim Rabbi Amen Ramel. Ki Ayin Ba'Ayin Ruh B'Shuv Adonai Tzion. Ata Takum Tarachem Tzion Ki Et Lachanena Ki Ba Moed. As Shivenu Adonai Elecha Ben Hashuv Hadesh Amen Pekedem. And we will all have the school to go to Eretz Yisrael on the wings of eagle, and we will all have part in Eretz Yisrael. Amen. And everything that we are doing is Meshem Kol Yisrael. So we are going to be a good in the yard side of Rachel Imenu. And also the yard side of, it's the birth also of Binyamin, because Rachel Imenu passed away when she gave birth to Binyamin. And it's also the yard side of Maor uh, Enaim, Rabbi Menachem Nachman Mitchernobyl, Mitchernobyl. So Allah v'shalom s'chotot agen alenu, that wrote Maor Enaim. We learn from his book. And it's also the yard side of Metushelach, so Besiata Dishmaya, we have a lot of tzadikim, and we are going Alema Shalom Sutam Tagenalenu. And also it we are going to do it Lilunishmat, Sara Angela Bat David and Oledet Me Malka, Alaya Shalom Tishutat Zrab Tsar Khaim, Lilunishmat Mazalto Bat Simcha Alaya Shalom Tishutat Zrab Tsar Khaim, Lilunishmat Ayelet Bat Geula, Alaya Shalom Tishutat Zrab Tsar Khaim, Lilunishmat Angela. You know, I, we miss, we miss uh, the people that used to come all the time to the Shurim, our sisters. Amen. All of the soldiers that fell, uh, that, uh, that, that uh, were killed by, by uh, the terrorists, and all of the souls that were killed by the terrorists, Aleyhem ha-shalom, t'in neshutam tzrotzo ha-chayim, Hashem will revenge their blood. Amen. And also, Bezrat Hashem, all of the kidnapped, may Hashem bring them now, safely home, Bezrat Hashem. Echzir otam achshav ha-baita, and may we all have the zchut to repent, and may Hashem give refuah shlem, refuah ta-nefesh, refuah ta-guf, to klal amo Yisrael. And the ones that are healthy, may Hashem continue the health. Amen. 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 And אבל יש לנו שתיבדל לחיים טובים וארוכים, יש לנו עוד אחת שימה שמחה בת שרה, שהשם ייתן רפואה שלמה בסייעתא דשמיא. אז טוב, now we're going to speak about רחל אימנו, about the old set of רחל אימנו, and we'll learn the merit of, um, of the Jewish women, the merit of the women, and the merit of getting married. How much it's important for both sides. I'm sure it be like this, so I can see all of it. Okay, how much is it important for both sides? So we see that uh, Yaakov Avinu goes away, uh, his father and mother, tell, they tell him, Rivka says that she can't bear it anymore, Esav is getting married to the women from Knan, she can't bear it anymore. So she said, why do I need my life? She says, Katsti bechayai, why do I need my life? If Chas v'shalom, gam Yaakov Avinu will get married uh, to one of the girls over there. So she speaks with Yitzchak after she knows that Esau wants to kill his brother Yaakov because he came and, and received the blessings, even though this was from Hashem, and even though that he, uh, Esau sold his rights of the firstborn to, sold it. There was a covenant between both of them, and he gave them the, the merit of the, the rights of the firstborn. He gave to Yaakov. So he was really supposed to get the blessings. Report. So again, he was supposed to get the blessings. The blessing was supposed to be him, but you know it's a world of lies. 
you, you see it also here. You can uh, say a lie and you stick to it and everybody thinks it's true, but it's not true. Oh, Bruha Ba. Yes, we have a chair. Come on, Bruha Ba. We see that Jacob takes the blessings and when he comes in, his father feels that it's paradise is open because he knows the smell of paradise. We have this Shabbat Shabbat Vayera. So Yitzchak was put on the, on the altar in order to be slaughtered as a sacrifice. And some of the Mavoshim say that a, a small cut Abraham yeah, Avinu made on his throat and he went three years to paradise in order to heal himself. So he knew the smells in paradise. So when Yaakov Avinu comes, he smells the smell. The smell of my son. This is the smell of the Torah. A person who studies Torah, but truly studies Torah, he has a smell of paradise. We all have smell. Our souls have a smell. It's not the perfume. It's not the perfume. We can put as much perfume as we want, but we all have, each human being has a smell. The soul, we are the soul that is dressed inside the body. The body is the clothing of the soul, but we are the soul inside the body. The eyes are the mirror of the soul. That's how you, can, you know a person by his eyes, because it's a mirror of us. Why? Because the eyes, both of them in numerical values, 260, 10 times, the Kedusha, 10 times the name of Hashem Yud Kei So they are the mirror of the soul. So each soul has a smell. That's why when Mashiach comes, he will know who is truly righteous and who is not by the smell of the soul. He doesn't, look to, he doesn't need to see anyone. By the smell of the soul, he will know who is righteous and who is not righteous. Can you imagine? And this is connected to our character traits. So all of our character traits. That's why Galuta Dat, the, 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 um, the exile of knowledge today in our times, in our times, is the exile of our character traits. We have to work on ourselves to become deservable of the term human being because we can be a, an animal an animal in the clothing of human being. We have to be deservable. In order to be deservable, we, we have to work on our character traits, to cling to the truth. So uh, each and every one of us has a, 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 a smell that is specific to his soul. And when the, uh, Jacob and Minu comes in, uh, 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 it's his father, he feels, he knows the, the smell of paradise. And he says, my son has the smell of, of the garden that Hashem blessed, which is paradise. And then when he goes out from the other door comes a slab and he feels that hell is open in front of him. Can you imagine? He doesn't see Kahu enough, but he feels that hell comes in front of him. And he gives him, he says, uh, and we know that once our children study Torah and, and we study the Torah, then a slab cannot touch us, but once we are lenient with studying Torah, then Esav has more power, and we see it all over, through all of our history. But we, we need to observe this in order to, and to accept it in our mind, in order to practice it. So we know that Esav says, wow, my, my brother took my blessings, even though he does not deserve it, but it doesn't matter in a world of lies. So he decides that he's going to kill his brother. Rivka is the, the, their mother. Hers, here's this, she wants Yaakov to go to her brother, to Lavan, that he should go to her brother. So she tells Yitzchak, what, what would she tell him, that, that Esau wants to kill him? No, because, because Yitzchak loves Esau. <laughs> so she tells him, listen, if my son is going to get married to the women, look how smart Rivka is. She, he's going to get married to the women in Canaan. Even your father didn't want you to get married to the women in Canaan. Please send Yaakov to get married f f with one of the family, which send him back to Lavan, to my brother. So one of, of, of his cousins, he will get married to her. So Yitzchak agrees with her, and they send him 40 years he studies in the yeshiva of Shem Be'ever. And why 14 years? Seven years. 
in order to, to fix his own attributes, okay? All of the uh, seven counts of the Kabbalah that is under the head, Chesed, Gevua, which is mercy, um, mercy, judgment, uh, beauty, uh, eternity, uh, glory, and the foundation, and Malchut, and kingship, and then seven years to study how to behave when you, st when you live among uh, non-Jewish people. And how to and how to behave and what to do and how to keep the Torah when you live among non-Jewish people, and then he goes to Lavan, and he sees Rachel. First, he comes to the well. There's a well, and know that when when a person meets uh, his future wife next to a, a, a place of water, this is blessings. He who is thirsty should go to the water, which means that go, water is symbolizes the Torah, which means that he sees a woman and Bezat Hashem, Hashem, she has the fear of Hashem. So uh, we see Moshe Rabbeinu, he met Sipora next to the well. We see Eliezer, Ebed Abraham, Eliezer, the, the servant of Abraham Avinu, also he meets Rivka next to the well. So, and Yaakov Avinu comes, and he is next to the will, and he sees people from Haran over there, and he asks them about Lavan, and then they tell him, you see here, his daughter comes, Rachel, because he had, Lavan had a lot of uh, life, livestock, but Hashem made a plague in the livestock before Yaakov Avinu came. So there was a small amount of livestock that Rachel was the shepherd, because she's going to be the mother of Klal Israel. So she is a shepherd. If you pay attention, Moshe Rabbein was a shepherd. Avraham Avinu was a shepherd. All of the Manhigim, Yitzchak Amelech, Yitzchak Avinu was a shepherd. Yaakov Avinu was a shepherd. King David was a shepherd. Hashem tests all of the leaders of the children of Israel with the sheep to see how they will behave, how compassion they will have. And by this, he knows the character traits. Even though Hashem knows that our character traits, he knows us, but still, Okay, Simcha. So we see that Hashem tests all of our leaders by by the well. Be'er. This, you know, the wells that Abraham Avinu did and Yitzchak Avinu came and opened because after Abraham Avinu, the, the people of Abimelech closed the wells. Yitzchak Avinu came to open the wells. These are the wells of wisdom. It's only a, 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 it's a, it's a, a physical in this world, but truly the spiritual part is the wells of wisdom because this is water. It's the wisdom of our Torah. So we see that he sees he sees Rachel, and what does he do? He, he goes to her, he kisses her on her forehead, and he starts crying. So this is very important. So we see th three things. First, the water, and I told you the water means blessing, and it means Bezrat Hashem, that he's in the right place, because no called Samel Kulamayim. And then we see that he gives her a kiss. Why? Because he saw this is his Bashem. This is his half soul. You know, when the soul comes to this world, it's combined from male and female, and Hashem separates the male and the female and, bring, and brings them to this world. They are born in different places. And until the age of 20, usually, um, immediately, the, the, our partner in life is in front of us. Mamash, we don't have to work for this. But if we miss it because we we fell with arrogance or other things. We didn't pay attention. We thought we have time. We didn't think about it like we are supposed to be humble and do the will of Hashem. Then we miss it. So then we have other partners, but it's not the perfect match like it is it's supposed to be from heaven. So he saw, he knew, this is my Bashir. This is my, uh, my mate, my, my soul mate. And he cries because he already, look, everything, the beginning includes everything that will come after that. He already sees in Ruach HaKodesh, in the spiritual uh, 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 way, that Rachel is not going to be buried with him. He sees that. And he cries because all of the people, that the men that were standing there said, what did, what's going on here? <laughs> that he, uh, 
You know, all of the righteous people were, were suspected of Erva. Erva is an intimate relationship that is forbidden. So Moshe Rabbeinu, the same thing. So we see that he's a, 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 a crying okay. because of the two causes. One, because he sees that Rachel Imenu is not going to be buried with him. He knows that this is the one that he's going to get married to. And, and then he, is, he, he knows what they're thinking about him, and he cries for this too. And the kiss the, uh, was bebchinat chibur shal neshama l'neshama. Yashkeni min shikot piu ki tavim dodecha miyayim. King Solomon says, why? Because when we study the Torah, it's like kissing Hashem. Hashem gives us a kiss. Can you imagine? Bruchana Adonu! Okay, so we continue again. So it means when we study the Torah, we had a lesson about this. When, about the, through Baratania, when we study the Torah, Hashem gives us a kiss. Can you imagine? Now we are sitting and studying. Each of one is, gets a kiss from Hashem. When we do the mitzvot, when we follow the commandments, and we get a hug from Hashem. <coughs> yeah, we don't see it. It's spiritual. But it is. King Solomon writes it in Kshira Shirim. Yashkeni mishikot piu ki tovim dodecha miyayim. So it's mamash kacha. Hashem gives us a kiss. We're studying the Torah together. So now he tells her that he's the brother of his half-father and the son of, Rif, of Rivka. So this is very weird. He's not the brother of a father. A father is his uncle. Because Lavan is the brother of Rivka, his mother. But he tells her, he, he, this is spiritual. He says to her, I am your, the brother of your father in conning. If he's going to con me, if he's going to deceive me, I will know how to behave because that's why he went, also part of the things that he went to study in, in the yeshiva of Shem Be'eber, how to behave. And, and then he says, but I am the son of Rivka. I am righteous like Rivka. I'm the son of Rivka, which is my character traits are just like my mother. And you see how much he loves his mother. And his mother told him, when he told her that, you know, I, I, I'm going to my father to get the blessings of my baby, he will, Chasva Shalom, God forbid, to curse me. And she says, all of the curses will be on me and not on you. Can you imagine? This is a mother. Mother loves her children. It doesn't matter what they'll do. She will accept everything and, and, and she will try to put them in the right way because she loves them. That's Ima. That's mother. So uh, that's Rachel Imenu. So we see now that he goes to Lavan and Lavan comes and hugs him because he remembers Eliezer, the servant of Abraham that came with a lot of jewelry and money and, and gold and camels and he sees that he doesn't have anything. So uh, he, he, he tries to kiss him in the cheek to see maybe he put diamonds in his cheek or gold or something. He's hiding, so he tries to kiss from both cheeks, but he sees there's nothing. So he tells them, well, you know, I ran away from my, uh, my brother and his son, Eliphaz, wanted to kill me, <laughs> wanted to kill me, and, and I gave him everything that I had, and that's why I don't have anything right. Okay, so now, shh, now he knows he doesn't have anything. So he tells him, you know what he says? He tells him, I want to marry your daughter. Now, Laban had, had twin daughters, just like Rivka had twin sons. Okay, everybody knew that the older from the twins will marry the older from the, uh, the gold twins, and the, old, the younger will marry the younger one. So it says over here, and he says, the older one is Leah. Pay attention, Leah is part of the name Elohim. Leah is a part of the name Elohim, God. Okay, and then we have over here, Veshem Aktana Rachel, and the youngest is Rachel. Ve'enei Le'a Rakot, ve'Rachel ha'ita yifat toar ve'yifat mare. So we learn that Le'a ha'eyes, the eyebrows, nachon? The eyebrows fell, so she had very weak eyes. Eyelashes. Eyelashes fell, and why? Because she heard from everyone that the oldest Esav is going to get married to us. So she asked people, so tell me something about his son. They said, oh, don't mention his name. He's so wicked. He, he murders, he rapes, he steals. Don't mention it. She said, wow, I'm going to get married to such a person? So she was uh, standing and praying to Hashem 
until all of, all of her um, eye, uh, eyelashes fell down, fell out. And, uh, and see what happened. If Rachel knew that she's going to get married to the younger one, but uh, Leah did knew that she's going to get to, uh, married to the wicked one. So Leah wanted to be part of the children of Israel, that she will bear the children of Israel, be part of the tribes. They were very spiritual then. It's only now that we are less spiritual because of all of the materialistic things that are around us, so we don't see beyond them. But so she didn't want to get married to Esau. She prayed and prayed and prayed and cried and cried that because of this she got married first to Yaakov before Achim, before her sister. Not only she got married first, but she had children first, and she had most of them. Look what prayer does. Even if you have a decree, even if we have a decree upon us, even if a sword is on the throat of a person, he should not prevent himself from mercy. Why he should pray? When we now, let's say there's a decree about, uh, everybody has problems, everybody has suffering. We have a, a decree upon us that we don't feel that it's, it's very um, nice. We don't feel nice with it. We don't feel good with it. So, dear ladies, we are in, in a certain spiritual level. Once we pray, once we daven, then even though we look the same, but we are not in the same spiritual level anymore. We elevated our soul to a higher spiritual level. This is mamash. A, a, this is a tool. It's a tool of emuna. Rabbi Nachman Bereis Rabbi Lavi Shlom Sfotot Egen Aleinu Merafila. It's a tool. How, how do you? How people know that we uh, believe in Hashem? The tool of emuna is prayer, but it has to be meuka deliba from the, from the bottom of our hearts, from mamash from our hearts. Once we pray to Hashem, even though we have a decree upon us, because we elevated ourselves to a different spiritual place, a higher spiritual place, now we are not the same human being. We look the same because the clothing of a soul stays the same until, until we, we give back the, the, the body and, and the body goes back to earth. But now we are, spiritually we're not the same person. So now the decree does not apply to us. Can you imagine? So Leah was supposed to get married to Esau, but she was praying in such a way that not only that the decree went away from her, but she got married first. She got married to Yaakov before Rachel, and she had six of the tribes. Can you imagine how she, Hashem flipped all of the decree from her just by praying, but praying with all of our heart and changing all of the reality around her. And we have the same power with the daughters and sons of Rachel Imenu, Sarah Rivka, Rachel, and Leah Imotenu. We are the children. So we have the same power to change all of the decree. So she had, she had very um, weak eyes because of, uh, she cried so much. And because she cried so much, okay. So now he tells him that he wants Rachel. Rachel bitcha ktana. So why? Because he knows Lavan. He knows that Lavan is deceitful. So he tells him, "I want to marry Rachel, your daughter, the small one. So don't bring it because he had Zilpa and Bilha were also his daughters. So don't give me another a, a younger girl." But I want this girl, Rachel. Don't take Rachel from the marketplace. I want your Rachel, <laughs> your, Rachel, your daughter, and the little one, the, the younger one. This is what I want. And don't change her with any anybody else. Now he tells him, "You work for me seven years. You're going to be my sh the shepherd of all of my life, uh, uh, um, livestock, and then I will give you the merit to marry her." And Yaakov Avinu sends presents to Rachel. And her father, he gives it to Laban to give to Rachel, her father gives it to Leah. She does, doesn't get the presents. Immediately has a plan. Wait, wait, Rabbi Yosef says a beautiful thing about this. 
So he says, it's better that I will give you. He, when he tells him, okay, I will, will give you my daughter to marry, it's better that I'll give you uh, my daughter to marry to you because you are my nephew, then I'll give, it to some, uh, to give her to marry to somebody else. So, and meanwhile, he has the plan in his head and he gives Rachel sees all of this. So Yaakov Avinu wants to be sure that, uh, that there won't be any uh, exchange with the daughters, so he gives us signs. Okay, he gives us signs. Now we are skipping after seven years. After seven years, Yaakov Avinu says, I, I work for you seven years, I want to get married to my wife, mm -hmm. to the woman that, that you, you promised me to work for her for seven years. So Lavana says, and no problem. Meanwhile, he goes to all of the town and he tells them that he, and they, that he wants them also to, shlep, to be with him, to do the big chatunad, a big wedding. And he tells them, he takes things from them, and he uh, and they and he tell and he warns them that they won't say, they won't uh, reveal to Yaakov Avinu that he's going to give him Le'ah and not Rachel. Which means the kala is totally mechusa. The kala is covered totally. He doesn't see the kala. So the invitation yes, said Le'ah. Uh, no, it said Rachel for Yaakov, but everybody knew it's Le'ah. So when, when he came, when they came in, in order to get married, everybody said, la, 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 you know what? <laughs> That's what we do. Lili, <laughs> lili, It goes like lea. Because they tried to tell him, they didn't know how to do that. They were afraid of Laban. So this is what they did. That's why um, you see a minhad to do the china. Mm -hmm. The china is a minhad that you put, that today everybody puts it, so you don't know who's the bride is, who's the kala. But usually they put it and they bless the kala, and they put the china on her hand. You know, it's a herbs that they put together, it's a red oh. herbs. They put it and in order to bless her, and then chatan yodeh zot kala. That, you know, to, uh, 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 the Jewish people, they come, they see the kala, then they cover, they, they put the cover on, on our head. To be sure nobody's uh, <laughs> cheating us, <laughs> to be on the, on the safe side. Mm. So, uh, uh, listen, and all of this Rachel knows. Now, we, we're coming to the very, so the, all this is happening in the family. Rachel doesn't say a word. She doesn't tell Yaakov that all of the presents go to her sister. Can you imagine what a woman she is? Mm -hmm. She doesn't speak, she doesn't say any word, and, 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 and it hurts. Everything goes, and you, you know that your father is going to give your sister as a bride instead of you, and you love Yaakov, you know he's your, your soulmate, and you, and you don't say anything seven years. That's Not crazy. one month, one week, or one year, seven whole years. And then the night of the wedding. And Yaakov is so happy, he thinks that he's getting married to Rachel. And then they, they, they get married and they are together. Rachel is hiding and Yaakov speaks to Leah and Rachel is answering. And Rachel is answering in the morning when he wakes up, he sees this is not Rachel, this is Leah. He tells him, what did you do? How come you cheated me like this? You're just like your father. And she tells him, I learned from you. Your father asked you if you're a son. <laughs> and, you, and you answered like you're a son. So she said, I learned from you. He goes to Laban. He says, what did you do to me? You conned me. What did you do? And he tells him, well, in our minhag, in our custom, first the firstborn has to get married. But you didn't tell me that this is your minhag. And you promise me I'll work seven years for you and you will give me Rachel. He says, okay, don't, no chashub. You will have seven days, seven days that you will have a party with the Chatan Bekala, and after these seven days, Achra Shiva, Shiva Yamin, then I will give you Rachel, and you will work for another seven years for me. And Yaakov, you know, it means, but what's, the question is, and from there we'll come to the merit of women, the question is, Yaakov Avinu didn't go to Rachel because he had complaints to Leah. He had complaints to Elavan. What about Rachel? She gave the signs to Leah because Leah gave the signs that Rachel gave her. So she helped conning him. And not only he's not, he didn't come and ask her anything, but he loved her so much that it says over here that he loved her more than Leah. 
that his love grew bigger to her after all of this. So how can we explain this? By this, Yaakov saw the, the soul of Rachel Imenu. He knew how much she loved him. He understood now how much pain she had when her father gave the gifts to her sister. He understood why she gave the signs to Leah because she, 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 she was standing on a, in a question mark. What's going to happen? My, 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 Simlat Kala, my, bright um, wedding gown, I see my father is taking to Leah. Now I can tell Yaakov that he's switching us. I can, I, I, I will not give her the signs, but what will happen to my sister? She will come to disgrace, to shame. All of the people will speak about her. Yaakov Avinu won't marry her. Do I want to get married to him with, uh, on the expense of the disgrace of my sister? And she decides, this is humbleness. This is humble, this is knowing your place that we're only passing through it. If Hashem made this in this way, it has a purpose. And Hashem knows the purpose. And for this, it's unimaginable because, you know, it's, it's emotion. The, usually, the sechel does not control our emotions. <laughs> we need that the rational thinking will control our emotion, but she was clinging to Hashem. And she said, Hashem, if you didn't want this, this wouldn't have happened, all of this. I don't want to put my sister in shame. I, want, I don't want to disgrace her. So she decides to back off. And she gives her the signs. She sees her dressed with that wedding gown that she's supposed to, dress, to be dressed with. She sees her getting married to her, 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 her beloved, her, the beloved soul, her soulmate. And then she even speaks on Yaakov when he was with her in order that he will not know that this is Leah. So he sees the Gdulat HaNefeshela. He sees the merit of Achel, so he doesn't look physically at her. <coughs> he doesn't see the, the, the external part of Achel, he sees the internal part of Achel. Her greatness, her soul's greatness. And because of this, he loves her more now. He loves her more, his love became bigger for Achel. So I would like to show you what Hashem means when He said, "Akadosh Baruch told Adam, 'Lo tov Adam levado.' It's not good that a man will be alone. He needs to have a soulmate, a woman. So Hashem created Adam and Eve, Adam bechava. And this is very important in order to distinguish between men and women. And it says in Bereshit." It says in Bereshit Besiyat Adishma like this. Zachar unekeva beram, Hashem created them, a male and female, vayivarech otam, and he blessed them, vayikra et shmam adam. Only when we are married, we are called adam, we are called man, adam. Okay, vayikra shmam adam, vayhi baram, when they were created. A male and a female, there's no more than this. There's either a male or a female. Period. This is what Hashem created, the creator of the world. No so, so we see that Yaakov Avinu sees, sees Sheker Achen, King Solomon mm -hmm. says in Mishlei Lamedalev, Sheker Achen behevel ayofi yishai rat Hashem ititalal, which means the grace is false, um, uh, the beauty is vain, and only a woman that has the fear of Hashem, she is going to be praised. So this is what he saw in Rachel Imenu, that she had the fear of Hashem, and she de is deservable that from her all of the children of Israel came. And this is what we see in, in Yirmiyahu the prophet, chapter um, Lamed Aleph. I'm going to Yirmiyahu, <coughs> chapter Lamed Aleph. And over there we see Rachel Imenu is praying for her children. She wasn't buried with Yaakov Avinu, Leah was buried with him in Marat HaMachpelah in Hebron in the double cave in Chervon, but Rachel Imen was on the way, Bebet Lechem, Baderech Ephrata, 
Why? Because when the children of Israel were exiled and the first temple was ruined, Rachel Menu was standing in front of Hashem and, pray, and, and praying for the children of Israel and shouting that Hashem will help the children of Israel. You remember that Yirmiya was, uh, was uh, set, uh, he called all of the forefathers and also Moshe Rabbeinu because they were called in front of Hashem so they can mourn and can and also find the merit of the children of Israel. Whatever they said was not accepted by Hashem. They didn't appease him. The only one that did is Rachel. Rachel came to him without, she wasn't called to come to stand in front of the king. Just like Esther Malka. Esther Malka wasn't called to stand in front of the king, but she went in order to save the children of Israel. She's the daughter of Sarah Rivka Rachel Melaimotenu. Rachel Imenu came and jumped in front of Hashem. And she told Hashem, Hashem, why are you envy? You have envy for the children of Israel. Look at me, I'm a flesh and blood, and I and I gave the signs to my sister, and I spoke instead of my sister, and I gave my my Bashar, my soulmate, to my sister to get married first, and then I got married to him. And she tells Hashem, Hashem, please forgive my children, and Hashem tells her, for you I will do that. But look, Yirmiyahu Nabi says about this in chapter 31. Uh, in Yirmiyah, uh, in the, the prophet, in the book, Ko amar Hashem min i kolech mi bechi ve'enayich mi bimi. He says, you can stop crying, he says. Ki yesh, and before that it says, Ko amar Hashem kol barama nishma. Hashem, he says, there's a voice that is heard up. Bechit, nehi bechit amurim. Rachel, that didn't cry like Leah in order to get married to Yaakov, now she's crying over her children. Bechit Amurim, Rachel Mevakal Banea, she's crying for her children, Mevakal Banea. All of the 12 tribes are considered the children of Rachel. Because of Rachel, Yaakov Avinu married Leah. Because of Rachel, Yaakov Avinu married Bilha. Because of Rachel, Yaakov Avinu married Zilpa. All of the 12 tribes from the essence of the home, which is Rachel Imenu. So she is crying over her children. She doesn't get any comfort. Nobody can comfort her. Because she doesn't see her children, they are all going to exile. He said, please, stop crying. I'm going to reward you for everything that you did, Neum Hashem. Veshavu meretz yoyev, and all of your children will come from the land of the enemy. Veyesh tikva lachritech, and there's a hope for your ending, Neum Hashem. Veshavu banim ligvulam, we are all going to come back to the land of Israel. So we see over here that Hashem, in the merit of Rachel Imenu, is going, Bezrat Hashem, to deliver all of the children of Israel. No this Jew is the left. power. No Jew left behind. No Jew left behind all of the children of Israel. Yes. So now we're going to go to Zohar Chadash. <laughs> and it's, it's also, it's, okay, it's also quoted, Harab Arush also in his book, Chokmat Nashim, also speaks about the merit of women over there. And now we're going to Sefer Azor, Azor Chadash, Parashat Chukat. Okay? Listen very carefully. Look how it's important. Can you tell them to be quiet? Please? When a man marries a woman, only then the Divine Presence is with him. Even if he studies Torah, but if he's not married, the Divine Presence is not with him. Only when a man marries a, a woman, then the Divine Presence is with him. Sharei terem shenista, ein shora alav. The Shekhinah is not above him. Ein Shekhinah shora al makom pagum. Can you imagine that Rabbi Shimon Bar Chai says, says this? That the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence, is, does not um, um, cover, shora, um, Present. Is present above a man that is not okay. married because he's considered pagum with a defect. Incomplete. Incomplete. And why? Because the man is mashpia, the isha is mushpat. 
The man is the one is, that's supposed to give things and the woman is supposed to, 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 to receive it. Okay, this is a male and this is the female. The male gives, the female receives it and, and makes it physical in this world. For example, the male has the sperm, the female has the egg. Once the sperm meets the egg, the woman gets pregnant and then it, it, a whole human being is created in the womb of the woman. And it becomes physical. Okay, not only spiritual, but she, a man go, uh, go, um, uh, uh, brings his wife a flower, she will make bread, challah for him, she will make cakes for him, she will do things. This is made, uh, that Aisha makes it physical. She is his partner in life, she is the one that is, helps him and, uh, and, and uh, corresponding to the way he behaves. Because the woman is a mirror image of her husband, worshipping Hashem. So let's continue. When the divine present is not, presence is not above the man, then the 12 channels of gifts are prevented from him. What are the channels of gifts? This is what we give our husbands when we get married. Listen, I'm, I'm reminding you, and it's written, it's page 62, and it's written like this. Uh, he, who, he who is not married, which means he doesn't have a good things in his life. Like Hashem said, it's not good that a man will be alone without a wife. Without happiness. You should be happy in Chumash Dvarim, chapter 14, you should be happy, you and your household. Household means your wife. Belo bracha, without a blessing. Shekatuv leaniach bracha el beitcha. Yechezkel, chapter 44, says to bring a blessing to your wife. Beitcha, every place that it's written, beitcha, it's your wife. It refers to your wife. Belo shalom, without peace. Kmo shenemar, Iyov says, chapter 5, Beadata ki shalom o alecha. You should know that there's peace in your home. Again, every time, Beitcha or Alecha means your wife. Because we are the one that prepare the home for the husband. We are the one that make kosher the home, take care of the children, bear children. So this is the wife. As gam belo shalom. Belo ezah, without help. Shekatuv, in Parashat Bereshit, chapter 2. Selo ezah kenegdo. I will make him a helper, a wife that will okay. be corresponded to him. It depends on his, uh, how he behaves. Belo kapara, without atonement. His wife is a, is a toyment, can you imagine? Belo kapara. Bechiper ba'adol ba'ad beito. A kohen agadol, when he comes in, who he first atones for, for him and his wife and his children. Beito is his wife, okay? Belo Torah, without Torah. He can study as much Torah as he wants. Moshe Neymar, which means, it's, it's in Yom chapter 6, if, if there's no help to me, also the Tushiyah of the Torah is not with me. And it says, without wisdom. King Solomon says in Mishlei chapter 14, the wisdom of a woman in Bilzah home. Without life. Because King Solomon says in Kohelet, chapter 9, that you will see life with a, women, with a woman that you love, your, your, your wife, without a will, chapter 18. A person who gets married, finds good, without, without a wealth. Because it's written in Mishlei chapter 31, Accomplished woman who will find. So, with, without wealth, without honor. Also, it's in Tehillim, with, in Mishlei chapter 31, that a woman with grace has honor and brings honor to her husband. Because Eshet Chayel, an accomplished woman, is called a woman that has the fear of Hashem. 
כמו, כמו שנאמר בתהילים in chapter 19 that speaks about the Torah, יראת השם תורה, that the fear of Hashem is pure. וכשנעשה אישה, וכשנעשה איש אישה, when a person, this is בזוהר הקדוש, when a person marries a, a, a wife, כל 12 השערים נפתחים. All of the 12 channels of blessings are open towards him. And then, ונשלם כדוגמת העליונים. And then he's just like a, a heavenly a, a creatures in heaven. So dear ladies, this is the merit. It's also written in במסכת um, יבמות, in the Gemara. I won't refer to it. I'll finish with this. But it's also in מסכת יבמות, also page um, 62, עמוד ב', also it's referred to and written all of the merit that a, a man gets when he gets married. 12 channels of prosperity are open to him, abundance of blessings that he gets from his wife. Wealth he gets also from his wife because he lo metzuvavosa, we are not commanded and we are doing it. So the, the sachar, the reward of a person who is not commanded and is doing it is in this world. Because all the man is commanded, so all of his sachar, all of the reward of everything that he does is in the world to come. So how he will uh, succeed here? Through his wife. She is not commanded and she's doing it. And by this, the blessings are poured towards the married couple. So the Siyat Adishmaya, let's bless that we will all have the school to read Mashiach Tzikhen Barachamim Moim Bimara Be'amim Amen. Eliyahu Nabi Zakhu Lato, Golam Ipharadana Nechabro Bimara Lachai Yachid Barabim Alacha Kerabim. Achenu Kol Bet Yisrael, Anitunim Batsara Ubashriya, Ubin Ben Bayam, Ubin Bayabasha, Makom Yerachem Alem, Yotze Mitzara Lirvacha, Ubamela Lora, Meshubut Demula, Ashta Ba'ad Lo Bezman Kerib Yimru, Amen. Bezrat Hashem, the Zchut of Rachel Imen, and all of the righteous Tzadikim will stand for us, and Klal Yisrael, and we all see Mashiach now, with big mercy, Bezalel. Amen. 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 Amen.